Hi, today I want to hoist my bike. <laughs> hoist. <laughs> I don't know why I find that word funny, hoist. Anyway, we have three bikes and a limited space. I thought to put one bike on this side of the garage door, the other one on the other side, and the third bike, we won't have room for it. So I thought, why not put it on the wall here? There are a bunch of different options. One is that you install hooks on the wall and you hook your bike to them like this. The other option is the front wheel hooks that you hook your front wheel to like this and the bike stands like that. The problem with this method is that the bike sticks out too far in front of the garage door. I only have around like two and a half feet. The third option is to have hooks on the ceiling and hook your wheels to them and the bike stands like this. Ugh. All these hook systems are good and dandy and have their own application. But I don't really like them because you have to do a lot of heavy lifting to put them up. So my wife and daughter can do it and I'm the only one stuck doing it. And I'm not really a fan of heavy lifting either. What if I drop the bike on my face? So I found this hoist system on the web that you connect some hooks to your bike and hoist it up with pulleys and rope. It's something like this. There are two hooks, one to the back seat and one to the front steering handle. And with this system of ropes and pulleys, there are four ropes holding the weight of your bike with a force of F which is the same force you are pulling your bike up with. This means the weight of your bike is four times F, meaning you are pulling your bike up with a force equal to one fourth of the weight of your bike, which is much simpler. Now, something I don't know with this system is that because it's kind of loose and the bike can rotate, what happens if the back of the bike is much heavier than the front? Would it just pull it down and the bike flips? I guess we'll see what happens. So this is what I bought, which seems well made and sturdy. I noticed all different brands make the same design, so it all returns to the belt quality. I'll leave a link to what I bought in the description anyway, so if you need it, you can buy it. In fact, I can leave an affiliate link down there, so if you buy it, I make money. <laughs> well, let's see if it's a good product first. Well, this one claimed it can lift 50 pounds, and my bike's maximum weight, which is mine, I bought it for $100 from a toy store, is like, 43 pounds so it's close but it is still within the margin the metal parts seem they can handle more weight so it might be the rope so if you need to lift more weight make sure you buy something that can handle that weight or change the rope to something stronger now to mount these i have to find studs or in case of a ceiling those wooden beams which are called joists because I have to make sure I screw these into something proper that can handle the weight of the bike. Now most of the houses in Vancouver are made of wood, but if your ceiling is concrete or something else, find a proper way to screw these into that. Now you might ask, hey matey, don't you have a stud finder? Of course I have a stud finder, here's my stud finder. But see, it finds nothing. It finds me because I'm a stud, my god. At first, I thought my stud finder is broken, it detects nothing. But then I realized it detects depth change behind the drywall. And these walls are filled with insulation, so there is no depth change. There is material change, but it is not sensitive enough to pick on that. But I have a trick to show you to find studs even without a stud finder. See, these drywalls are screwed onto the studs. So all you need is a strong magnet and a piece of paper don't go scratching your wall with the magnet. It's gonna leave marks and your wife is gonna kill you. Then put the piece of paper on the wall and scan the wall with your magnet like this. And oh, there you go. You will find a screw in the wall. And you know what that means? There is a stud there. Well, long story short, the joists inside my house are running this way. So I found a screw here and another screw here and I thought the joist is here. I drilled the hole here and there was no joist. So I realized just this piece of the ceiling, because there is a balcony on the top, the joists are this way. And the funny thing is that there is no insulation up here. So I could just use my stud finder to find the joists. We are getting distracted. But the point is exactly where I want to hang my bike, there is no joist. So I have to make the ceiling strong there. So here's my solution. See the joists inside the ceiling are this wide, which is one and a half inches, and they are 16 inch apart, center to center. So I cut this piece that is a bit over 18 inches, and I'm gonna screw it on the size to the joists. One more thing for the spacing of that piece to the wall, because the hook goes here, I have to make sure the wheel 
Well, I just have to make sure that the wheel has enough spacing to the wall and doesn't hit the wall and leave a mark because of, you know, wife murder problem. And the size of this piece of wood is called 2 by 10, which is not exactly 2 inch by 10 inch. It's like 1.5 by 9.5 inches. Anyway, it should fit this nicely. Then I put my long screws on the sides of the wood first, halfway, three on each side. Then I align the wood accurately and screw it on. Hmm? Did it not go into the stud? Hmm. Today it seems like the joists are shifted that way by half an inch. So I just move sideways by half an inch and try again. And I'm gonna do something I shouldn't probably do. I'm gonna see if I can hang from this piece of wood. I don't think I'm strong enough to hold on to the wood like that and hang from it. But it seems strong enough to hold the bike now. Now we align this and screw it on. Done like a professional. It's not coming down. My bike handle distance to the back of the back seat is around 30 inches. And these hooks go straight up here. I've seen some people install it so it comes down at a slight angle like this. But I think I'll just go up straight. Okay, that's done. Now we have to pass the rope and the hooks through it. One thing I don't quite like about these hooks design is that it's too right angle. I mean, it could just slip off the bike and your bike may fail down. So I might have to bend it up a little bit. I'll see after I mount it. Let's see, it seems I have to pass the rope through this hole first and tie a knot at the end. Well, this knot is supposed to hold your bike at the end, so make sure you knot it tight and thick. Zip. Okay, it seems strong enough. Hopefully the rope is strong. Now we pass the rope under the pulley and over the stationary one. There you go. Now we pass the rope over the next pulley, go through the hook pulley, go over this pulley. Now this is something to lock the rope. You have to pass the rope through both these pieces. So when you pull your rope, it just passes through like this. If you pull your rope this way and your bike pulls it, then it locks in place. It's not gonna unwind anymore. And then to unlock it, you have to pull this one down first and then go up straight. Go in at an angle, it will lock. For extra security, there is this piece that you have to screw on a stud in the wall and then you tie the extra length of rope around it. Now when you tie the end of your rope around this, even if the lock up there fails, your bike won't fall down. Okay, the moment of truth. Let's see if the bike will go up or will fall down on my head. One hook is on, the other hook is on, it seems. Let's see. Back! It is a bit sketchy. Yeah, this hook just wants to pull out. I have to bend it a little bit. Well, my bike seat doesn't have much edge back here to hook onto either. I have to make sure I hook behind this thing. And this is just my butt cushion for my fragile butt. And I'm gonna bend all my hooks like this a little bit tighter. Hmm. Hooking these hooks on is not as straightforward as I thought. Okay, moment of truth, again. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, look, the bike is going up straight. Although I'm pretty sure the backside is heavier or maybe, I don't know what's going on, but it's going up pretty straight. <whistles> ah, I did install these at an angle. I thought I made them straight. Oh, it's still good. Now you go back here and lock. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Well, it's standing up. The question is, how easy is it for this to fall? Hmm. 
Seems good. And I can tie the extra rope around here. Yeah, nice and tight. Installing those ropes at an angle might be beneficial for hooks hooking a little bit better. But it does make it a little bit heavier to pull up. They did supply too much rope, so I may have to cut the excess that I don't need. Well, I guess with too much rope, it means if you cut your extra rope, you would have one more set of rope in case your old one wears out, you can replace it. Just put a knot at the end of your rope so it won't accidentally get pulled up and unravel from the pulleys. Okay, let's bring it down and see how easy it is to come down. The back is coming down, okay. The front is coming down too now. Whee! Ouch! Burned my finger. Yeah, maybe go like this. <laughs> back up again. It's not too light. Lock it. There. Now come down. Whoop. Don't burn your finger. Try again. Hmm. Make sure your bike won't swing and hit the wall. It's gonna leave a mark. Well, it goes up and down quite straight. I think I figured out what's going on. See, I have one hook here, the other hook here, and I measured my center of gravity somewhere around here. Which means if I draw a vertical line, you see it's a little bit closer to the back than the front. But really, all the bike needs to do is to turn like 5 degrees or something for the line to pass between the hooks and the bike levels. If it turns any further, the center of gravity will be too close to the front hook and the front will be much heavier pulling the bike back level. So most normal bikes will stay level on this hoist system unless you add a very heavy bag or something to the back and bring the center of gravity back and up which means the bike now will have to rotate this much so that the center of gravity passes between the hooks. So don't ruin your center of gravity. I think it does have some getting used to, especially the hooking part. Let me see if I can figure out a way to easier hook it. Okay, let's say I won't bring it all the way down. I stop close to the ground. I lift the bike a little bit and unhook it. Then I can easily unhook the front. Now if I want to hook it up again, I put the front first, pull on the hook, and lift the back and put it on the hook. Yeah, it's much easier to do it like this. Okay, I feel better now. So I think with the proper technique, you can hook it easier too, and then just pull it up. I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. Only hippopotamus will do. And luck. And it's not very light to pull it up either. Maybe because I put it at an angle. Let me bring down my weight scale and see if I can actually measure how much force is needed to pull it up. Okay, let's check it. I am right now 192 and a half pounds. I lost a ton of weight, thank you. With the bike, I am 234 and a half. So the bike is like 42 pounds. Now we try to hook it again. Let's pull it up. 176, 176 minus my weight. So I'm pulling it up with 16 pounds of force. So it's around one third of the weight of the bike, not one fourth. It's definitely much, much easier to bring it down. Very little force required. See, there is a bunch of friction in this hoist system and the back hook is easier to pull up because the force from my hand goes through fewer pulleys before it gets there. But the same force goes through a few more pulleys before it gets to the front hook. So the front hook is harder to move. This means when I pull the bike up, the back seat goes up first and then the whole bike. And when I lower the bike, the back seat drops first and then the whole bike. On the way up, not only I have to provide that one fourth of the weight of the bike I was expecting, but I have to also overcome the friction of the pulleys. That's why my force is more like one third of the weight of the bike. On the way down though, the friction actually works to my benefit because it holds the bike up to some extent. So I have to hold the bike with much less force while I'm lowering it. Okay then, it does help me pull it up with less force. Now the question is, would I recommend this? 
It does help you if you don't feel strong enough to pull your bike up, it will reduce the force by around one third. I do have a bit of hard time hooking it in the right places. I don't think the bike will fall down anytime soon. It does help me save space so I can park another bike under. I do feel a little bit nervous if the hooks are holding on well, but it seems well now. I'm thinking for the amount of trouble I have to go through to hook it every time, it might just be easier to have two fixed hooks on the ceiling and lift this. Oh my God, it is much heavier and hook it to the wheels like this. But yeah, it actually reduces the required force to lift it up much less, so that's a plus. Especially if you have a bad back like I do, lifting the bike up would put a lot of pressure on your back. But pulling it up actually removes pressure from your back. So yeah, I like this product now. So if you found this review useful, slap like, subscribe, share, comment,